tenth grade math teacher was senile, and I am quickly discovering why. Because being a math teacher makes you senile. I've, I've decided that. Anyway, but because she was senile, none of us ever understood what she was saying to us. And I would, I would read the book while she lectured or attempted to. And then when she was done so that I wasn't disturbing her lesson, I would have be also done reading the book and I would turn and teach my friends. And they would say, you should be a math teacher. So here I am. <laughs> All right. However, and you know what? Actually, one of my friends is also a math teacher. One of the, my friends from that same class that I tutored is a math teacher in Davis District, like up in Davis County. Anyway, there is one thing, however, that I learned from my math teacher in 10th grade, but I didn't actually understand what it meant until later. I didn't understand it that year. My goal today is to help you understand this this year. Today, in fact, okay? And that thing is she had this big printout from an old dot matrix computer on her wall that said a logarithm is an exponent. And every time we were talking about logarithms, she would point to it and say a logarithm is an exponent. And then she would go on explaining and I, we would be like, okay, but a logarithm is an exponent. If you learn nothing else from me, take this with you. Okay. In math, when we are doing story problems, we take certain words and turn them into certain math symbols. What do we always turn the word is into? Equals. So logarithm equals the exponent, okay? Let's take a problem that has an exponent and turn it into a logarithm using this statement. Okay, if I have something like five squared equals 25, I can turn that into a logarithm by realizing the logarithm equals the exponent. So log, equals exponent. What's the exponent in this problem? Two. Okay. Now the trouble, the tricky thing is figuring out where the other stuff go. The five is always called the base of the exponent. So it also is the base of the logarithm. We write it as a little teeny five so that it's log base five. So base of the exponent is also the base of the logarithm. And then the other number, the 25, goes in the empty spot. I didn't leave a big enough empty spot. So let me rewrite this so it looks better. Log base 5, 25 equals 2. A logarithm is an exponent. Do you see how this sentence relates to the math? You don't know how often I say this to myself when I'm doing oh, to myself. Say <laughs> dial, I tell you. How often I say this <laughs> to myself when I'm doing logarithms because it seems like I have to relearn logarithms every year because it's not something that stays with you. It's something that you have to like put your brain back in the right mode to do them. Okay. Let's um why do we need logarithms? Any idea why we might need logarithms? If you have a math problem that involves adding, you have to solve it by using what? Subtracting. If you have a problem that involves multiplying, you have to solve it by using dividing. Everything has its opposite and is required in order to solve. Okay? Guess what logarithms are the opposite of? Exponents. Okay? So why do we need logarithms? We need logarithms anytime we are trying to solve something involving an exponent. So for things like interest, buying a car, buying a house, 
having a credit card, investing your money for retirement, all of those things use exponents and therefore also use logarithms. This really does have some real life applications in this chapter. Okay, in fact, this is the project that will actually be on your portfolio. You don't get it today, you will get it next time. Okay, so why do we need logarithms? Because they are the inverses of exponentials. Exponent, I can't spell. There we go. Okay, so for example, if I have a function, f of x equals some number to the x power. Let's go back to what we were doing today in section 6.2. And let's find the inverse. How do you find the inverse? That means we trade x and y and we solve for y. Correct? So f of x means y, so let's rewrite that. So now let's trade the x and the y, and now we need to solve it for y. Um, how do we solve for y when y is the exponent? We have to use a logarithm. So now, look at our sentence, a logarithm is an exponent, and turn this into logarithmic form. What is 2? Two? 2 is the base of the exponent, so it is also the base of the logarithm. So we write log base 2, a logarithm is an exponent. So log equals the exponent. Now we have an extra piece, the x. Where does it go? Right here. So now things are kind of switched around because of the way I do logarithm is an exponent, but is it legal in math to just trade sides of an equation? Yes. So y equals log base 2x or can I say that the inverse function is log base 2x, right? Right? Yes? So doesn't that mean, we did one of these today, so it leads right into this. Here's the line y equals x. If we have an exponential function looking like that, now you would only know that if you've actually done section 6.3 notes, what will our logarithm look like if we take these points, like this point right here would be at 1, 0. What do we get if we trade the x and the y? Oh, and also there would be a point at 1, 2, because if you plug in 1, 2 to the first power is 2. So that means over 1, up 2 is another point on the graph, right? So over 1, up 2. So the inverse trades our x's and y's, so our point 1, 0 is 0, 1. And our point 1, 2 is 2, 1. And therefore we get a logarithmic function that is the inverse, the reflection of the exponential function. Um, from your notes, if you have watched 6.3 notes, you would recall that there is an asymptote here for an exponential function. So guess what happens for our logarithmic function? The asymptote also changes x and y values. So the asymptote that used to be at y equals 0 switches so that it's now at x equals 0. Okay, so here's the asymptote for an exponential function at y equals 0 because um, your exponential function will never go below 0 because when you're doing 2 to a power it's not going to go negative. Likewise, a logarithm will never, the x value will never be less than 0. Do you remember me saying the three things that we always have to pay close attention to when we're doing domain? Fractions, square roots, and logarithms. Fractions, the denominator cannot be zero. Square roots, the square root
root cannot be negative inside the square root. Logarithms. What can logarithms not be? The x value. Cannot be zero. 0, and it cannot be negative. So that is your other restriction for domain because the x value that you plug in for a logarithm cannot be 0 or negative. All right, I'm going to stop the video at this point.